Get out because I'm moving in with my family. Jeff pointed at us and loudly declared while my in-laws were giving instructions to the movers. His face twisted maliciously, and I couldn't help but show my disgust. However, Stacy next to me reacted differently, asking Jeff with confusion, Tad, you didn't know. Hearing this, Jeff was visibly puzzled. Stacy seemed so flustered that not only Jeff, but also his mother and father, stopped what they were doing and looked over at us. But Nickel continued to give instructions to the movers, seemingly uninterested in the situation. Despite my dismay at the behavior of Jeff's family, I was determined to reveal a certain truth. My name is Dean Anderson, a 46-year-old remote worker. I have a husband and a daughter, leading a typical life. After several dates, Jeff proposed to me three years into our relationship. Having a frequently ill mother, I wanted to marry as soon as possible to give her peace of mind, so I accepted Jeff's proposal. Sometime after our marriage, I found out I was pregnant. Jeff was truly happy, eagerly looking forward to seeing our child. When our daughter Stacy was born, Jeff took an active role in parenting, and I lived happily. However, I had some worries. The biggest concern was about my mother. Her health improved upon seeing her grandchild, despite being almost better than before, and she visited us often. Initially, she visited frequently, but as Stacy entered middle school, my mother's health visibly declined. I quit my job to be available for my mother, choosing remote work. This decision allowed me to fully take care of my mother's hospital admissions and discharges. By the time Stacy graduated middle school, my mother was very happy when we visited her. I hoped she would gradually recover and be able to go out as before. However, around this time, Jeff's behavior began to change. Initially, he was willing to help with my mother's care, but lately he had become grumpy, complaining that I wasn't paying attention to him. Going to your mother's again? You don't care for me when I'm tired from work, but you always, always look after your sick mother, he would say. Such incomprehensible things. And even when Stacy and I tried to appease him, he strongly rejected our efforts. Worried about both my mother and Jeff, Stacy took over caring for Jeff. Mom, leave Dad to me. You should go to Grandma sooner, Stacy said with a smile, and I always relied on her. One day, while living this way, I received a call from my sister-in-law, Nicole. You've been neglecting my brother lately, she accused out of the blue making me stare at my phone screen in surprise. I wondered if there was a mix-up, but Nicole's name was clearly displayed on my phone screen. Confused by the baseless accusation, I could only deny it. It's been a while, Nicole. What's going on all of a sudden? I haven't been neglecting Jeff, I said, clueless as to why Nicole would say such a thing. Don't play dumb. I've heard it from my brother. Lately, you've been neglecting the house to care only for your own mother. Can you still proudly call yourself a wife? Indeed, I had been focusing more on my ill mother lately. But I never thought Jeff would tell Nickel about it. However, I wasn't neglecting our home. Stacy helps with the household chores when she gets back from school, and I manage both my work and my mother's care along with the housework. Lately, I did feel like Jeff's complaints had increased, but they were about trivial things like wanting to eat at expensive restaurants or not liking the smell of the laundry detergent, things we couldn't do much about. Just as I was about to explain in detail, Nickel said something shocking. Unfortunately, this has reached our parents too. Someday, our angry mother might come to scold you. Leaving me with those irrational words, Nickel hung up. Immediately surprised by the unexpected turn of events, I was speechless until Stacy spoke to me. Mom, I'm home. What happened? You look stunned. Regaining my composure, I told Stacy, who had just returned from school, about the conversation. Stacy, too, was shocked and incredulous. Sighing in disbelief, she said, 
Hey, Mom, there's something I've been thinking about for a while. Can I talk to you about it? Nervously, I nodded to Stacy's serious request. Listening to Stacy's concerns made me feel truly disheartened. During a period filled with Jeff's nonsensical complaints and Nicole's harassing calls, my in-laws finally took action. One day, after visiting my mother, I came home to find my mother-in-law cooking in the kitchen. Entering the living room, I was so surprised that I dropped my things and just stood there, staring at her. Noticing me, my mother-in-law frowned and approached. Oh, you're back. How's your mother? Well, have a seat. Anyway, feeling her irritation, I had no choice but to follow her past me to our living room sofa, where I received a lengthy lecture. Initially, she scolded me for my attitude towards Jeff and berated me for neglecting my household duties and making my husband do chores. However, I noticed some inconsistencies in her lecture and corrected her. Mother, there are some misunderstandings. I have never made Jeff do the household chores. In fact, Jeff hardly helps at all. Embarrassingly, it's Stacy who helps me out, I said. Hearing this, my mother-in-law suddenly stood up, pointed at me, and started shouting. You think that lie will work on me? Are you saying that child is lying to me? What a terrible daughter-in-law. With her face red with anger, she stormed out, leaving the stove on and everything behind like a tempest. I hurried to turn off the stove so I couldn't chase after my mother-in-law. That day, Jeff was in a strangely good mood, almost unnervingly generous. He kept cutting me off every time I tried to start a conversation. Stacy also seemed puzzled by this, so we decided to stay silent and watch the situation for now. For a few days, Jeff continued to be in a good mood without any issues. Thanks to that, I was able to take care of my mother without feeling uneasy. However, a few days later, my mother quietly passed away. Stacy and I, though engulfed in sadness, managed to get through the funeral and decided to spend some time sorting through my mother's belongings at her house. I had wanted Jeff to help, but mentioning it made him sullen for the first time in a while. So Stacy and I proceeded with the task. Naturally, the house was filled with memories of my mother making it difficult to make much progress as each item reminded us of her. I reluctantly contacted Jeff and ended up staying at my mother's house for the night, but he seemed to be in a good mood. Take your time and relax since you're already there, he said. But with Stacy's school and my work, it wasn't that simple. For the time being, I told him we would return home the next day and decided to rest for the night. The next day, after making some progress with the sorting, we decided to go back to our house. As we approached our home, I noticed a large truck parked in front of the house. Wondering what it was, I realized it was a moving truck with Jeff and my mother-in-law directing the unloading. What's going on here? I ran up with Stacy to stop them, but Jeff stepped forward, puffing out his chest as he noticed us. You're back already. It's too late for you to return now, he said. As I stood there in shock, watching the belongings being moved into the house, Jeff crossed his arms and continued proudly. I'm moving in with my family, so you two need to leave. I was determined to reveal a certain truth. Forgot this house is mine. Ah, uh, the in-laws were shocked, and Jeff began to panic, turning pale. Even Nicole stopped directing the movers and confronted me. What are you talking about? There's no way you could afford to build such a fine house. Now it was my turn to respond with confidence. Thank you for the compliment. This house was built by my father, and originally it's my family home. That can't be true. This house is so beautiful, it looks almost brand new. Does it look that way? Thank you, Mother. My mom renovated it for us as a wedding gift. Jeff should know about this. I couldn't understand how it could have been forgotten, but this house is naturally in my name, 
and the renovation costs were covered by my mother. She moved out happily to an apartment so that we could live here happily for a long time. Jeff and I went to thank my mother and even discussed living together. Jeff, who tends to forget things that don't suit him, seemed to realize that his plan had failed. And just as I was about to speak, Stacy began to share information she learned from the inheritance process. Grandma left a lot of assets for me and Mom, but it's not money. It's things like land and apartments that can't easily be converted into cash. Hearing this, Jeff turned to his parents with shining eyes, and Nicole raised her hand in joy. Wait a minute. I had no idea your mother had so much wealth. You never said anything about this when we got married. Jeff's outburst led his family to start complaining. Selfish. What's that? Isn't that like marriage fraud? That's terrible. You intentionally kept quiet because you didn't intend to give Jeff any of the property. What a greedy woman. And from the conversation earlier, it sounded like only you two would inherit everything. My father-in-law, who noticed the most crucial part, looked at us, and I nodded clearly while explaining the situation. Yes, the inheritance is divided between Stacy and me only. Jeff gets nothing. We found the will while sorting through the belongings yesterday. Hearing this, Jeff's family turned red with anger, especially his mother, who was the most furious. This can't be allowed. We'll get a divorce. Then I'll make sure to get compensation from you. As his mother screamed in anger and frustration, I accepted her reaction without hesitation. Yes, I agreed to the divorce. The moment I agreed, his mother turned around and ran off, presumably to the city office, which is probably close by, to get a divorce form. I deliberately did not stop her angry departure and watched her leave. As I watched his mother head to the office, Jeff asked me grumpily, Hey, what are you planning to do now? What do you mean? Are you talking about the divorce or where you will live? Both Jeff almost snapped at me, but I looked up at the house indifferently. This house is actually already on the market, I said, which surprised Jeff. Confused by my words, Jeff looked puzzled. He exchanged looks with his father and then looked back at me. He didn't seem to understand what I meant. Of course, it was to be expected. Well, we were spending another night at my mother's house. There was no way Jeff and his family could have imagined that I was selling this house. Facing the puzzle, Jeff and his family, I once again spoke up with confidence. I've always felt it. Every time you treated me terribly, I wondered why I married you. I put up with it for Stacy's sake, but even Stacy said she couldn't take it anymore with you. Faced with this shocking truth, Jeff turned pale and looked at Stacy. Then Stacy firmly met Jeff's gaze and voiced her thoughts. Dad, you always said it was sad to be ignored as the head of the house or to be belittled after coming home tired from work. But don't you think there's a reason you're treated that way? Why don't you realize that you're neglecting and belittling us? Stacy's pointed words left Jeff speechless. I thought if he just silently signed the divorce papers, sulking away, I would have nothing more to say. Just as I was thinking this, Nickel blurted out something shocking. If I knew it would come to this, I wouldn't have bothered with the renovation. Everyone present was taken aback by the sudden confession. Looking at Nicole all at once, I was surprised. Not only that Jeff and my father-in-law were unaware of Nicole's actions, but also by her statement itself. Why would you do something like that without permission? Yelled my father-in-law, to which Nicole started making excuses without much concern. I wanted to live in my ideal room, okay. So I thought, why not take over this house and renovate it while we're at it? But you're selling the house, right? Oh, but if you're selling it, why not renovate it and sell it for more? Nicole's nonchalant and cheery demeanor as she said this made Stacy and me sigh. Not only were we dismayed, but Jeff and my father-in-law felt the same. 
with Jeff clenching his fists in suppressed anger. Finally, unable to tolerate Nicole's recklessness, he began to yell. Hey, even if it's going to be sold or become ours, you should have told us first. We were preparing to move. Where were we supposed to live during the renovation? Though his preamble was a bit off, his point was valid, leaving Nicole surprised. Oh, really? As Nicole responded, Jeff was about to yell again when we saw my mother-in-law running towards us from a distance. It seemed she had brought the divorce papers. I got it. The divorce papers. Now sign it right here. Despite being out of breath and excited, my mother-in-law, who was handing me the divorce papers, was unaware of the commotion that had just occurred. But that didn't matter to me. I took the divorce papers from her and handed them to Jeff. You write it. After all the times you've belittled me, you agree to our divorce. Right. No way. Jeff immediately refused, possibly because he knew about my mother's inheritance. However, I couldn't tolerate Jeff's behavior and his family's strange antics any longer, so I provoked him, aiming to get him to write the divorce papers. Changing your tune so suddenly? I guess you've been in a good mood lately because you were thinking of taking over my house, right? Too bad. Even without my mother's inheritance, I had no intention of handing over this house, and it's already planned to be sold. Either way, you'll end up homeless. At my words, Jeff looked bitterly at the divorce papers, trying to control his anger and calm himself. I knew too well the points that would set Jeff off. It might be a disgrace to you, but if you sign this divorce paper, I might feel a bit relieved. I figured that by demanding from a position of superiority, Jeff would easily be swayed to do as I wished. Given his condescending view of me, this statement was born from such thoughts, but indeed it contained many of my true feelings. As expected, Jeff's face turned red with anger, and he snatched the divorce papers from my hand, starting to write immediately. If you insist so much, I'll give you your divorce. I felt a sense of relief at Jeff's hasty action. I had worried that he might reconsider and calm down, but Jeff was simple after all. After receiving the half-completed divorce papers, I filled in my part to prevent any further unexpected events and completed it. I then entrusted the finished divorce papers to Stacy and turned back to Jeff's family. All that's left is to submit this to the city office. So take all the stuff you brought in with you. Wait, wait a minute. Are you serious? You said you'd feel relieved if Jeff signed the divorce papers. That's correct, but I never said I'd agree to the move. What about the renovation? What renovation? Unaware of the renovation discussed in her absence, my mother-in-law, standing next to my father-in-law, grabbed Nicole. After receiving an explanation, a big argument started, and while my father-in-law and Jeff tried to intervene, I attempted to leave with Stacy. However, Jeff and Nicole determined not to let us escape, grabbed at us. But the movers, who had been watching the situation with dismay, stepped in to mediate. Amid the chaos, we heard the sound of police sirens. Protected by the movers, I looked around and noticed neighbors gathered, drawn by the noise. Seeing a police car approaching with its red lights flashing, someone from the neighborhood must have called them, and we felt relieved. But that relief was short-lived, as Jeff's entire family seemed about to attack us. Just in time, the police intervened, and we were safe. Despite being stopped by the police, Jeff's family's commotion didn't cease, and another officer had to escort us into a police car to calm the situation. Nicole, mistaking our being escorted for an arrest, attempted to throw belongings into the house and was naturally stopped by the police. With additional support arriving to finally quell the disturbance, as Jeff's family began to calm down, the police asked us to accompany them for questioning, leading to further troubles. 
When either Jeff, Nickel, or both acted against the officers, they were arrested for obstructing official duties and taken away in police cars that had arrived for backup. Jeff's parents were also scolded by the police and taken to the station for questioning. We watched the entire ordeal from the police car, where we gave a brief statement. Eventually, Jeff and I officially divorced. The divorce, initially resisted by Jeff, even after signing the papers, was prolonged. But thanks to a lawyer, we were able to finalize it smoothly. Soon after, my house found a buyer, and I was able to secure the money from the sale. Nicole was pushing for a renovation, but the house had already been renovated when my mother passed it down to me, so a buyer quickly appeared. Afterward, my in-laws were not prosecuted, but they cannot return to the house I inherited, and they had sold their own house, expecting to move into mine, leaving them without a place to live. Furthermore, due to the commotion, they have become outcasts in the community, struggling to find a place to belong. It's inevitable given the extent of the uproar they caused. My claim for compensation has further cornered Jeff's family. The incident became well known at Jeff's workplace, leading to a pay cut followed by his voluntary resignation. Now he is working day jobs to make compensation payments to me. And though only for a short while, child support for Stacy naturally balancing income and expenses is difficult, and he seems to be juggling multiple jobs to keep up with the payments. Nicole, after the death, settled, continued working as a beauty consultant as if nothing had happened. However, rumors of the incident reached her customers and eventually the upper management, leading to her dismissal. She had been living a flashy lifestyle, so her savings quickly dwindled. Like Jeff, she is now working multiple jobs to make ends meet, including the compensation payments to me. As for my in-laws, it seems there was some trouble after the incident leading to their divorce, and now they are living separately. The mother-in-law, now ostracized by the neighbors, was fired from her part-time job. The father-in-law, who was planning to enjoy his retirement with his pension, has had to allocate most of it to the compensation payments to me, and is now looking for work despite his age. They are each in a difficult situation, but this is their preparation for us, and I hope they take this time to reflect. On the other hand, Stacy and I have moved to a new house, so even if Jeff's family tries to approach Stacy's school, it's no issue since she has already transferred. Continuing my work from home and thinking about spending peaceful days ahead with Stacy naturally brings a smile to my face. Feeling liberated from our past troubles, I plan to live happily with Stacy, just the two of us.